subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. I'm with Arvind Gupta, head of the Digital India Foundation, former CEO of uh, MyGov and a digital czar, perhaps Prime Minister Narendra Modi's go-to digital person, Arvind, welcome to the print. Thank you, Jyoti, for having me and uh, uh, I look forward to this discussion. Thank you. I think my first question to you is uh, about the ban, the, uh, the government's ban on these 59 Chinese apps, uh, including TikTok, WeChat, Weibo. Uh, and my question is that, is this happening? Is this a message to the Chinese government in the wake of the clash in Ladakh between Indian soldiers and Chinese? I think, uh, you know, first let's, uh, Jyoti, if I can uh, give you a few back, a little background and then build upon why this has happened and why now, right, really, and that's your question. So you have to understand we are living in a, in a data and digital age where uh, from the earlier times where natural resources, human resources, military power really gave, a, you know, along with your soft power like culture and food and everything else gave a country its strength. Today, a lot of strength comes from the data and digital uh, prowess and technology, which is looking at the future. Okay. And if you see the top 10 uh, companies in the world, they are all dominated by, um, no longer by oil companies, no longer banks, but mostly dominated by data and digital companies, be it Amazon, Apple, Google, uh, you know, Tencent, Alibaba, all of those. Now, now in that era, what the Chinese have been doing is a model that, uh, they basically close their economy. They have this so-called Chinese firewall, uh, firewall where no other companies can actually go and operate there. Mm -hmm. And they build these massive platforms in China, which then raises money in capital markets, both in China, outside China and in the US. And then they use that money both to you know, uh, progress their own platforms, like in countries like India, and uh, also use that money to uh, buy you know, controlling stake investments in many other ventures. Now, this has been part of China's outreach, uh, much like their um, uh, OBOR, um, you know, project. This, this is, yeah, so this is uh, this is equivalent to their OBOR, uh, the China Silk Route projects in, in importance. And what we have to understand, a lot of these, most of these platforms, I, we must say, um, which is the Baidu, ByteDance, Alibaba, Tencent, are somewhere, uh, and the 5G players like Huawei, ZTE, yeah. whosoever you take, they have some kind of a, a dotted link or a association with the Chinese Communist Party. So state control is very high, they are state sponsorship, and with that state sponsorship, they really become very big. Mm -hmm. Now coming to Why? what happened, in, and you know, they have been, so, and the, the background of this is that they have been in the past really making a choice. If they were neutral platforms or platform when they operate in India, they make sure that they're taking care of Indian national interests. That's not been the case. They've been found many times violating national security issues. Uh, they've been using um, data of unsuspected citizens. Found, even some, they've been found violating national security issues in the past as well. Is that what you Absolutely, saying? absolutely. I mean, the, the, again, uh, location sensitivity. And see, so you have to understand a lot of these platforms, you and me sometimes don't even know they exist on our phones if the, if the phone is of Chinese manufacturing. And they come pre-bundled. A lot of these things pre come pre-bundled with the phone. While you look at some of these new age things like TikTok, but if you analyze UC News, UC Browser, um, you know, MI players and a list of 59 that have been banned, you'll realize that a lot of these apps come kind of packaged with the phone that you buy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Chinese phones probably occupy uh, by 60% of the Indian uh, market today. And with that, a lot of people have these apps as a default on their on their on their phones. Let me stop you right here. We are an open society. We are a democracy, and if that distinguishes us from China, you just said that absolutely they don't allow Google or, or various other companies to come into their country and they want to control information. But India is not like that. You don't want to be in other China, right? We don't. We we have never wanted to control information, but we have a right to control this information. When Ch the Chinese state has access to a lot of sensitive citizen information, 
location information and they all these applications have the potential to be weaponized into into a misinformation agent into all this 50 60 crore smartphones of india that is where they become dangerous but give me an example explain to to me to all our viewers what that really means how can i own a xiaomi phone how can i become a, an agent for, for misinformation Absolutely. Now that's a good question because now what happens is let's see first of all there uh, uh, consider a news which is curating news uh, mm -hmm. on 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 one of these platforms. I mean you see news being curated by everybody being popped to you, feed fed to you. Now you imagine you are in the hinterland of India. You get news every day, and you're in the border area. You're getting a news that India's soldiers being beaten uh, uh, left, right, and center. China, India, you know, concedes. Uh, thousands of kilometers of um, uh, um, land to China and this is happening constantly and you know um, and this news is being sourced from unknown portals or um, uh, some you know Chinese propaganda agents you and being fed now on the Ladakh clashes it could be happening it could be happening it has been happening in the past and in this case also it has happened they, they take information which is suited to the Chinese interest and promote it, prioritize it in the curation of the news. Uh -huh. This is one example. It has happened in the past in Doklam. When did it, it, has happened in, it happen? When did it happen? In Doklam. It happened during the Doklam crisis. It happened, that's why when the defense personnel was stopped from using those 44 apps in 2017, it ha we saw a misuse of this, um, of location sensitive information during the Patan court attack where location was leaked. See, you can today, knowing location, knowing um, what you read, what you do, you can really predict a lot of behavior. And that's where the Chinese machinery is very strong. You keep hearing about Chinese AI being the most advanced. And they, they are using all this data to, to their advantage. So suppose they see suddenly 500 or you know, 50 people in the morning, 4, hour, 4, 4 a.m. in the morning, moving towards a sensitive Air Force location. They actually know that some activity is happening. Yeah. And... And they have made sense out of that in the past and shared it with our India's uh, other enemies. So, so you're I saying think that Patan, it happened during Patan and during Doklam? During the we have seen that behavior in the past, uh, you know, uh, and, and that behavior in the past has been flagged to them that this is a suspecting behavior. We don't want it to continue. And what did and, they say? Uh, and, and this is the, I mean, that, and now what has happened in the recent past is what you have to see, that they have been caught uh, doing activities uh, and when they are caught doing you know trading um, for on iphone for example tiktok was caught um, copying or accessing information that it should not be then when apple researchers caught them they said yes we, we are doing this wrong we'll fix it in the future we never fixed it so a lot of this malicious behavior has been attributed to them but that was apple again it was not an indian uh, organization. I mean, until now. Oh, I it's the Apple phone. It's an Apple phone. It's the same. Apple. So, so Jyoti, just hear me out. It is yeah. the point. As we, the point is that there are these backdoors. Indian agencies have also found it. You asked me for some examples. I gave you some examples. I can keep giving you a lot more examples. The point being that there is a lot of backdoors and uh, malicious activity potential that a lot of these apps have. And, and they have exploited that. Now comes to the second part. You talked about India being a democracy. Of course, we are a democracy and mm -hmm. we encourage and we have given them warnings in the past. Um, and, you know, they have, they have addressed a few. They probably not addressed a lot. The, the bigger challenge is, the, you know, while they have uh, legal, con, you know, uh, reporting in India when they operate in India, mm -hmm. you have to know that ultimately they, by Chinese law, they are responsible to share every information of every activity that is stored in their servers with Chinese government, the state of China, whenever it's required. That is not the case with any other platform that we use. And that is what makes it um, the, the, the scary part. And that's what we have to recognize. And when we have found instances of that happening, um, they, you know, always it has been, yes, it's a problem on our end, we'll fix it. Mm -hmm. And now I think it was the right time to make sure that that is now not being going to be used in the future against India. That's why India took a very, uh, very, very, very... Are you linking uh, it to the dark clashes? Are you linking it to this security um, related to... I, I, I personally believe it has been brewing for a time. It is not just the Ladakh clashes that, uh, that prompted it. 
and if did uh, if that acted as a catalyst i i think it's the right time that it happened it's high time it happened it, it should have happened long back um you talk to um, any of the non chinese players and platforms they'll tell you that um, it's a very very unfair advantage not so one is the national security and sovereignty aspect the other is the the, the non level playing field being pre bundled into applications pumping in a lot of money uh, which is you know which makes it predatory in uh, nature from a pricing perspective a lot of other issues but the bigger issue i think in the current circumstance was that number one the citizens um, uh, data which could lead it to uh, potentially for misinformation campaigns weaponizing of information and to the issues of uh, sec security and sovereignty and public good in, at large so i think uh, and uh, you know i i i must say that if it, uh, the ladakh crisis um, prompted it and made it a catalyst i think it's a very very welcome thing so tell me something uh, you said that a lot of the phones for example come bundled with these apps and therefore they have access to say location and other citizen information now does this mean that you know that these chinese phones and a lot of them are very cheap and very price sensitive in a market like ours that these phones will also be banned i don't th see the hardware still uh, probably needs to now re realign themselves given that the software layer hardware by itself i mean i don't want to get into the technicality of it but hardware by itself the operating systems by itself do certain things but mostly they depend on applications to uh, to do bulk of the activity a bulk of the processing image processing and other things so i think with these apps getting banned that that capability goes away from them the phones become a lot more safer and um, also you know they will now be under more self restraint to make sure that the, uh, there are no pre bundling of applications that are happening with them and uh, and whatever goes on now on their respective play stores or applications that come with phones they will have to pass a much higher scrutiny and a much higher test um right. but again and again jyoti i'm saying that don't don't think this is just a ban on this 59 apps it's a, it's a important uh, step that india has taken to ensure its data sovereignty uh, given the new data and digital age we are in i, I think we shouldn't underline that and second aspect that we shouldn't uh, we shouldn't forget is that when you talk about the ladakh crisis we also saw um, you know cert issuing statements that we are we are we are thinking or we are seeing a trend in phishing attacks a lot of cyber attacks happening in india australia faced a lot of cyber attacks uh, singapore faced similar attacks so i think uh, when when i say weaponizing of these phones a lot of small things can be done which can create havoc in our digital payment systems and in our e-commerce and and many other things i mean uh, phishing attacks can steal passwords and banking information and pretend to be somebody else and steal people's money so right. it can there is a lot of potential for creating chaos and um, this is also preempting that um, and the cyber you saw the cyber warning about 2 weeks ago so this yes. is this is preventing that also the two questions from that the first is that are uh, have we encountered has india encountered any of these phishing attacks or any of these other uh, threats have indian agencies encountered and the second question is about the about prime minister narendra modi's account on weibo being deleted can you tell us a little bit about see the the uh, the indian agencies have warned many times in the past the do department of defense has made um, carrying uh, any of the phones from chinese uh, manufacturers uh, uh, you know banned on that prevented people from using it there's there's many warnings that have happened uh, across the platform from 2014 onwards till now 2020 mm -hmm. Prime Minister Modi, of course, followed uh, uh, the moment uh, the, the certain Ministry of IT released uh, the, the advisory on that all these 59 apps, which included Bible, that uh, the PM was uh, himself present on, being a very prolific uh, social media user. He also went. Uh, uh, he showed his desire to delete the, uh, all the posts that he had made in the past in Chinese language, and and you know while dealing with the um, uh, you know the Chinese. Uh, uh in 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 terms of uh, the twitter or the vibo diplomacy yeah. and i think um the fact that he also went off the platform is a very strong signal that that this uh, uh, is a very um, long term ban and he's clear that this is uh, uh, he doesn't want to be where um, the china you know where which is not allowed by his country 
uh, uh, to, to, uh, as an access to his normal citizens. So he, I think he's sent a very, very strong signals both to Chinese and uh, to the Indian citizens that he stands behind this ban. So the question is, why is this being limited only to the Chinese? Are you saying that just the Chinese apps are a threat? Or is it that something has happened in the relationship? Because after all, when uh, well, that's another very, very good question, Jyoti. It's just not the Chinese apps which are a threat. You saw a company called WeTransfer. Yeah. Uh, and why this is a very important question is it was all these 59 apps got bundled as Chinese apps and um, they got, uh, you know, they got bucketed together because they were being probably being studied from a security aspect in a very different, uh, uh, you know, different aspect. But uh, about a month ago, there's a company called WeTransfer that had a similar uh, ban because they were doing something which was not desired. So they were they were banned in a similar manner. And uh, and and this is a very ongoing process. A lot of time, companies, um, you know, the CERT and the Ministry of IT under uh, under various section keeps uh, uh, you know uh, issuing uh, warnings, advisories, and as well as take down orders. So. Um, Right. This is an ongoing process. This is this is not a one-time activity. And of course, for the the 59 apps, it became like being clubbed together. But there's a lot of warning that has gone into them. And you see, uh, again, I repeat myself uh, that we there is at least two sets of advisories that the MHA and DOD had issued about the usage of these apps. So um, at, at various levels, to sensitive personals, to you know people who had national security clearance. So there there is uh, there has been a background to this. But lots of political parties, including the BJP, have been using TikTok to promote yeah, every, As I said, everybody has been using it. They are not security researchers or security experts. As long as the platform is available, they'll go on it and they will keep using it. But the moment there is an advisory against it, as in, uh, in most of the things in our life, we will go off it. And that's, that's, a, um, that's what the political parties have done, chief ministers have done, the government of India has done, PIB has done. Um, you know, everybody will kind of follow follow those same rules. So, Arvind, you've been very closely involved with the digital transformation of India these last six years that the BJP has been in power and he has, the Modi has been Prime Minister. When we look at platforms like Paytm, for example, you know, which have a huge Chinese investment. Now, it's an Indian company, but it has, you know, Jack Ma, who is a member of the Chinese Communist Party, has invested in Paytm. Now, what is what? What would you say to that? See, um, two points, and then I'll come to address that question. Um, number one, I also want to address the point that most of these uh, most of these fifty nine apps, uh, if you take bulk of them, I mean, maybe over fifty. I don't know the exact number. Don't even have Indian offices. Okay. Uh, they've been operating remotely, and um, they have re really very little, um, you know. By virtue of being pre-bundled onto, onto the phones, they have made a reach. So they have zero offices. If at all they had offices in India, they were doing India for global English language support. They don't employ very many people. They don't employ very many people. I think also this will lead to a boost of the Indian digital ecosystem, which is what I'm relating your question to now. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you talk about Paytm or other companies where there is investment of the um, of Alibaba, uh, which basically, basically owns a UC browser, by the way, yeah. Um, and so, uh, I think the companies will have to decide for themselves um, whether they exercise uh, control, uh, the investors exercise control or the founders exercise control. Mm -hmm. And uh, whether they serve the Indian consumer in the Indian country or they serve uh, illegally in the, the Indian country or not. So, they, they will have to decide that because otherwise the consumers are going to leave them and go, uh, go to another option. There are many options. Paytm also has tons of other options today. It's not that Paytm is the only option in the digital wallets and the payment space. So that will apply to anybody. If you would are going to- Paytm, What would you advise Paytm to do? I, I, it's not my job to advise Paytm or anybody that. else. But I, as I said, you have to take care of the Indian consumer, the Indian uh, interest, uh, if you operate in India, and that should be primary. If your control and governance is in India, uh, you know, the money can be from anywhere. It's not about the money. It's a, more about the control and governance and your prioritization of a country and the reporting into that country as long as you operate there within the legal framework. So two questions. One is that TikTok and other Chinese companies have also donated money to the PM Cares Fund. Now, TikTok has donated 30 crore rupees. I mean, it may be a, a drop in, in a very vast ocean, but it's there. So what happens now? 
Well, number one, it shows, uh, my take is very, very independent uh, view of this. Number one, it shows there is no quid pro pro here. I mean, it's, it's a great example of there is no quid pro pro. You, you, you pay, you pay, you don't pay, you know, the, the law of the land or uh, national priorities will remain national priorities. Two, um, I think uh, TikTok, uh, whether they crowdsource the money or whether they took it from their employees, uh, most of their employees happen to be Indian and they are, they continue to be Indian employees. They may not remain TikTok employees, but they'll continue to be Indians. So they have a right to contribute to a, a re relief and a welfare fund for Indians. So um, both uh, those, those would be my views, I think. Uh, and uh, this is a government that has many times said the same thing that, you know, there is no good pro pro. So uh, okay. TikTok should, uh, should know that very well. Thank you so much for your time and please subscribe to The Prince YouTube channel. Thank you again. Thank you. Very much.